give him praise tonight. Give God praise. Let's give him praise. Amen. Give him praise. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Mighty is our God. We are so grateful tonight. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We thank God for you. Amen. That are here. And uh, come on, get your Bibles. Amen. God's been talking to me about uh, <laughs> feeding on the word of God. Feeding. Amen. Growth, development, increase, spiritual growth, spiritual maturity. Amen. And so God's will for you, his plan for your life is for you to grow. Amen. And so uh, it may get a little heavy tonight. Amen. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. It may get a little heavy tonight. We're going to share some things and talk about some things. Amen. What's from the heart of God and uh, what he's given uh, for us tonight. And uh, go with me to Exodus 16 chapter. Amen. Exodus 16 chapter. Shall God's will for me is to grow. Amen. And so if I'm going to grow, I have to move out of the way. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so our whole focus is to come in divine alignment with God's will versus our own. Amen. And so we have to focus on God's plan, God's agenda. He's taking your life somewhere. He's leading you into somewhere. What is that somewhere? That somewhere is, is, is in his divine plan. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, and to give you an expected end. And so when you're talking about an expected end, God's bringing you to a place. It means greatness in your final outcome. Your life is not moving towards demise, defeat, failure. Your life is moving towards greatness, increase. And that's God's will and plan for you. Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief comes not before to steal, kill, and to destroy. But look what Jesus said. He said, but I have come that you might have life and that you might have it how? More abundantly. Amen. And so that's God's will for your life is to have it more abundantly. Let's look at that again. Amen. Let's say that again. Jesus said he, he came to do what? That you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. What does that mean? It means above and beyond what you can do for yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. We're talking about supernatural life. Is what we have. We live in the kingdom of God. Amen. We are not of this world. We don't depend on this world. We depend on the kingdom of God. And if we're going to depend on the kingdom of God, we have to know it. Amen. We have to know the kingdom principles. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be what? Added unto us. And so the world is constantly and persistently seeking these things of the world. That's not the kingdom life. Amen. The world is concerned about what they're going to drink, what they're going to eat, what they're going to put on. Amen. The kingdom life is totally focused on God's will, God's plan, God's agenda. Amen. And so you have salvation in your salvation package. Everything already belongs to you, what God has ordained for your life. That's why Jesus says you need not worry about these things. He says all these other things. That's what he said. All these other things shall be added unto you. And so the enemy wants to use the things of the world to distract the believer from fully pursuing after the heart of God. <laughs> Amen. And so if you're worrying about things, how you going to make it, how you going to have something to drink, how you going to have clothes and how, how you going to have food to eat, you're worrying about these physical things, they're going to be a distraction from you focusing on your personal growth and development in Christ. Hallelujah tonight. 
Amen? Amen. And so that's why Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Priority. Make God priority. Because see, everything that you need, everything that you desire, everything that you want is tied up in him. Wow. Amen. Everything that you're looking for, he already has it for you. Everything that you're craving and desiring, he already has it for you. Amen. The Bible says daily he loads you with benefits. Amen. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So that's letting you know how much God is concerned about you. Amen. Jesus said the very hairs on your head are all numbered. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a level of concern right there. <laughs> Amen. Who else knows you like that? Who else is concerned for your life? Who is concerned for you that much that they know the exact number of the strands of hair that's on your head. <laughs> wow. Amen. You have the Lord who said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you, but I will be with you always. <laughs> Even until the end of the world. Never leaves you. Not one moment. Never leaves you. Amen. And so that's why we ought to have faith in him. We're called to have faith and trust in him. We walk by faith now. We live by faith now. Amen. We live by the word now. We don't live by man's intuition. We don't live by perception. We live by the word. That's what Jesus told Satan, Matthew 4 and 4, when he was tempted of the devil. And the devil came to him and said, if you are the son of God. Now, he asked him that for a reason. Why? Because Satan never saw Jesus like this. He never saw the son of God in the earth in a flesh body. And so he said, if you are the son of God, he was puzzled. <laughs> if you are the son of God, do a miracle. Turn these stones into bread. He was trying to get Jesus to gratify the fleshly nature. <laughs> you see, and that's all Satan has. And that's why your fleshly nature is your arch enemy. It, it opposes everything that pertains to God, the spiritual life, you see. And so that's why Satan tempts you, attacks to tempt you, to test you, to draw you away and to get you onto his territory, on his ground, which is the carnal nature. And so all he has is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That's all he has. And so if he gets you to stay in that, he's got you. Amen. And you're living the opposed life against God. All right? And so the carnal nature, the Bible says, can never please God. It has to die. It has to die. It's got to be crucified. And so he tells us, the Bible tells us how uh, the flesh is crucified. How? Two things that we're required to do that's going to keep us in the spirit. Paul says, walk in the spirit that you fulfill not the lust of the flesh. What are those two things? Come on. Word of God and, and prayer. Word of God and prayer. Two things that you have to. It's not an option. It's, it's not a suggestion. You see, we have to understand that the Bible is not full of suggestions. <laughs> it's full of instruction and commands. This is the authority of God, not a authority. It is the final authority. Wow. Amen. It's we, we, we choose life. He said, I, I present before you <laughs> life or death. <laughs> choose life that you may live. You see, amen. And so all through scripture, this is the plan of salvation. This is uh, the plan of, of God. 
that we live and experience that salvation, amen, dominate the fleshly nature that's been dominating you all your life. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody tonight. Amen. Amen. That he has given you power to overcome that nature that's been that's that's had you heartache, headache, frustrated, can't sleep at night, depressed, in fear, anxiety, popping pills, trying to keep you calm your nerves. The devil is a liar. <laughs> Amen. And Jesus shed his blood on that cross. Why? For you to stay the same? No. Amen. For you to live the abundant life. He said, John 10, 10, that, that you might have life, that you might have life. That word life there is zoe, which means breath, which means the resuscitated life of God. It means to be restored back to God's original intent and plan for you from the beginning. Hallelujah. Amen. Which is to be just like him. <laughs> Hallelujah. You go back to Genesis 1 and 26 and you get clarity and understanding of what God wanted from the beginning. He said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Let them have dominion. Wow. <laughs> Three critical things. Let us make man in our image. God's saying, I want man to look like me. And that's what God wants for you to look just like him. Amen. And so as a born again believer, what has happened here is that through you being born again through Christ, when he looks at you, he doesn't see you. <laughs> he sees Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He sees his son, <laughs> the image of his son in you. See, remember now, it's no more I that live, but Christ that lives in me. What did Paul say? And the life that I live in the Flesh. Now I live by the faith of the son of God. I'm not living to myself anymore. <laughs> he said, I live now by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And so if I'm going to live that life of faith in Christ, I got to spend time with him. I got to break my routine of just being so busy, doing my own thing, just working hard, doing all this other stuff, and the word of God is slipping from me. I don't, I'm not in it like I should, you see. Come on, amen? I got I to gotta make him priority. Because, see, if the job went away today, what you going to do? Mm. Wow. <laughs> Hello, somebody. If all the whole, I mean, the whole company shut down, what you going to do? See, your faith is going to determine what you're going to do. If you've been in it or not, you see, panic, fear, worry, stress, pulling your hair out, trying to figure out. See, your confession is going to tell on you. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Your confession is going to tell on you. Your heart's going to tell on you. What's going on in, in, in your heart? What's been going on? And because what's in there is what's going to come out. What did Jesus say? Out of the abundance of the, come on, heart. The mouth speaks. Wow. Amen. So you don't, no, no, it's not waiting till you get into trouble, waiting till you get into some situation. Now you're running around trying to find some scriptures, trying to get some help from God to get over what you're presently dealing with. It doesn't work like that. Wow. Hello, somebody. That's why part of the armor that you are called to wear is called the feet shod, Paul says. <laughs> which is the preparation of the gospel of peace. Wow. It's Ephesians 6 and 10. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and what? And in the power of his might, not your own. <laughs> you can't do this. You can't handle this on your own. You can't make it on your own. Wow. That's why Jesus said, if any man wish to follow after me, first criteria, he said, first thing you must do, deny yourself, disown yourself. Amen. God said, he said, people don't want to deal with themselves. <laughs> wow. Amen. God said that people love themselves more than they love God. Wow. First commandment, which is what? Come on. First commandment. What did Jesus say? Come on. Talk to me. That, that's up. Love the Lord thy God with all thy 
heart, all our mind, and all our soul, and with all our strength. Wow. First commandment. Second commandment is, is equal to it. He said what? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Amen. So the first commandment, love God. That's the first commandment. Love God with half of your heart. All of your heart. <laughs> all. Everything you got, he gave everything he's got. Amen. And so he's calling for us to what? Give everything we got. All of our heart, not half, not some. Amen. And so as you begin to give yourself to God, and that's what Paul was talking about in Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, uh, Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present, present your body. See, when you get to the place where you're not present, that word present means to be present before him. When you get to that place where you're not present before him anymore, wow, you have opened the door for your own demise. Mm. Amen. I can think that I'm out of place in him and I'm not. I can actually go on thinking I'm okay and I'm not, not realizing that I'm living under a closed heaven. Wow. Amen. Walking around calling myself blessed, thinking I'm okay, closed heaven. Write this down. The heavens opens through divine, being in the divine order of God. Wow. Mm. I got to be in the order of God. If I'm doing my own thing, going my own way, living my own on my own principles, I'm going to be under a closed heaven. Wow. And I don't want the heaven closed over me. So I don't want the heaven closed over my life. I want the blessing of God. I want the heavens open. You see, I need the spirit of God. So that's all that matters. So you can seek things, go after things, and go after uh, the things of this world and value the things of this world and measure your life by what you have and be so far from God. Mm. Wow. So I don't want it. So I don't want it. <laughs> Amen. So the number one uh, priority of the believer is to please the heart of God, not please man. I don't live my life trying to please people. Amen. Totally after the heart of God. You see. Amen. He's in charge. He's in control. I live by his word, his principles, his standards, his faith, not my own faith. It's his faith that you live by. The Bible says that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. If someone's sitting up dealing out a deck of cards, he has dealt to every man the measure of faith. You have a measure of faith. It's up to you to grow it. Wow. The disciples came to him and said, Lord, increase our faith. There's, I hear you, Lord, Mike. There's some stuff that you are called to achieve and possess. You'll never get it until you grow your faith. Mm. Amen. As God called Israel out of Egypt, brought them out of Egypt, through the wilderness, into the promised land. God is taking you out of darkness, into the marvelous light, bringing you through the development stages of your life so that he can take you into your promise. Wow. If you can see and understand what God has for you. Oh, my God. Amen. The Lord your God. See, <laughs> He's not just, these are not just mere words. Yes, Lord. Go to Hebrews uh, 4 and 12. Oh, my God. Amen. Not just walking through life, wasting time. No, no, we're going somewhere. Shall we go on somewhere? In the name of Jesus. Amen. See, the word's going to carry you where you can't go. Oh, my God. Amen. And if you'll carry the word, the word will carry you. Amen. See, 
Some people will not see their miracle, their blessing, their increase until they get in their faith, start growing their faith. Wow. It's not going to work. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible. It is impossible to please him. Amen. So outside of faith, it's not going to happen. <laughs> you see. Hallelujah. We, we'll look at that in a moment. Hebrews 4 and 12. Come on. Uh, let's read. For the word of God is what? Is quick and what? Powerful and what? Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrows, flesh. And it is a what? Discerner of the thoughts and what? Intents of the heart. It's alive. So the word of God is quick. That word quick means it's alive. It's powerful. It's energizing. I like what the amplifier says. It's operative. It's effective. And so when it comes in you, it's, it's making changes. Wow. There's changes taking place. There's alteration. How many of you ever took a, a, a suit, a dress, or to, to uh, the seamstress to get altered? You needed some stuff fixed on it, changed on it, or whatever. Amen? It was, you got it altered so that they can look different from what it was. Amen? This is what the Word of God is doing to you, to your heart. And so, uh, let's say you had a bad attitude all your life. Bad attitude, just nasty. <laughs> you get a hold of the word of God. And it gets overflowing in your heart. Amen. That attitude has gone. There's a peace and a calmness that's coming. There's a discipline that's coming that you didn't have. That's why the disciples were called disciples before apostles. Because they were disciplined and structured by Christ. Mm, amen, somebody. John 8, go over there. John 8. <laughs> oh, my God. Hallelujah. So my life is changing. You see. Well, Pastor so-and-so, other people think it. It don't matter what anybody thinks. You got to live your life that way. You got to focus on it. It doesn't matter when no one thinks, when no one says, it doesn't matter. It's you and God. And you got to be so determined that, you know what? I'm hungry. I'm hungry for God. And I'm so determined that I'm going after everything that God has for me. <laughs> now you tell others you're going around the mountain 40 years if you want to. I don't have 40 years to waste. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You tell them, I don't have 40 years to waste. I'm not going around no mountain 40 years. We're going straight forward, upward, and forward. There's only one direction. Come on, shout. There's only one direction. We're going upward in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your success is not predicated by the natural realm. It doesn't matter what happened, what's going on. Wow. Amen. You know that widow woman? Uh, the creditors were coming to take her sons to be bondmen. <laughs> she got a hold of the man of God. And he gave her instruction on what she needed to do. What do you have in the house? All I have is a pot of oil. She didn't have money to pay her debt. But she had supernatural power. <sighs> supernatural connections. <laughs> oh, my God. He told her to go borrow vessels. You got oil in the house? Okay, go borrow vessels. Look what he told her. Not a few. Instructions are important. He gave her specific instruction from God. Go borrow vessels, not a few. Get a whole bunch of them. Take you and your son, shut up in your house, and pour the oil out. And she did that and began to pour the oil. And the oil kept flowing. And so as she began to pour, the Holy Spirit expanded the oil. The oil kept flowing. And she told her son, go get another vessel. He said, Mom, there's no more vessels. And the Bible said the oil stopped. Wow. You have an advantage above the world. Amen. But we can get so caught up in the world system. 
Stop distractions. Come on, stop distractions. <laughs> she said, man of God, I did what you said. She, he said, now go sell the oil, pay your debt, and live off of the rest. Wow. Wow. Now, in one day, God took her from a poverty state, couldn't pay her bills, couldn't pay the creditors to being in business and being able to pay all her debt off and still have enough to live off the rest. Come on. Oh, somebody ought to praise God tonight. Amen. That's the kind of God we serve. He's not the God that used to heal, used to deliver, used to work miracles. He's working miracles right now. We got to get our faith up. Shout, I got to get my faith up. Shout, I got to get out the way and get my faith up and live in the supernatural. <laughs> Amen. See, the beginning of change is self-confrontation. You need to write that down. <laughs> Glory to God. You got to confront yourself. As God says, you know, <laughs> the one that's holding you back the most is you. Wow. Wow. Amen. Well, we don't believe. Well, we don't, we don't eat right. We don't eat right. So because we don't eat right, we're, we're spiritually malnutrition. We don't eat right. We don't, we don't drink enough. So we dehydrated, spiritually dehydrated. <laughs> oh, my God. What happens if you don't drink enough water? You don't drink enough fluids. You get physically what? Dehydrated. You don't eat right or you don't, you don't eat at all. What happens? Malnutrition. You, you, you're going to deteriorate. Amen? So how about in the spirit? Mm. How about in the spirit? If, if I don't eat right. See, you got to change. You got to be willing to break your pattern. Break your pattern of living. Break your routine of doing things. You have to do that. Well, I'm just not used to reading and just, just listen, that's the, that's the enemy trying to keep you out. Break your routine. You have to be determined. But you know what? I'm going after God. And I'm going to drag this flesh in there. And this flesh is going to die. And I'm going to live in the spirit. And I'm going to walk in the fullness of all that God has for me. Until you get determined. Until you start uh, understanding what the Bible says. Use these words. Diligence. Be diligent. You got to get diligent. You got to get you got to have perseverance. What did Jesus say? Endure. They that endure to the end. He's telling us there's a fight. Just those words alone. He's letting you know there's a battle at hand. You see, they that endure to the end shall be saved. Wow. <laughs> you got to endure every day. You got to endure. Thoughts come to tell you <laughs> the enemy playing with your mind, is, you know. It's just, you don't have nothing. You're not changing. Things not working out. The devil is a liar. You got to go to combat. Don't sit there and just let those thoughts come on your mind. You got to go to war. What is your battle? What did Paul tell Timothy? Fight the good fight of faith. See, your fight is to stay in the faith of God. I'm not coming out. That's got to be your determination. I'm not coming out of it. I'm not coming out of it. <laughs> I don't care. Listen, as much as the enemy fights me about uh, uh, the, the, the ministry and, and empty chairs, and, and I'm not coming out of faith. I got a word from God. I got vision. I don't care what chair is empty. Don't look at chairs. I, I, I'm not moved. <laughs> you see, I came from the backside of the desert, from the wilderness. <laughs> Amen. I came out of preaching to myself in the mirror in the bathroom <laughs> for months. 
Amen. Hallelujah. And recorded it. Oh, shout hallelujah. <laughs> Amen, somebody. So I believe God. So God has his timing. See, faith says, God, I'm going to treat this like thousands are already here. I'm not waiting on nothing. Oh, my God. They're already here. See, faith says that, God, I'm going to put in place and operate like we're at a major level. I'm going to take what we have and use it for your glory. That's how you get more. Hmm. But you start counting heads and start getting, see, the enemy going to trick you. you you're going to be deceived. Wow. Amen. Because you're going to start measuring the success of ministry by numbers. Wow. And you forget about those that had the ministry church in their house. You forget about the Philippian jailer who almost killed himself when Paul and Silas broke out of prison by the power of the Holy Ghost. And Paul told them, don't do yourself no harm, we're here. And that man took Paul and Silas to his house, took care of them, washed them up, and Paul ministered to them. They got saved, his whole household. And that man, the Philippian jailer, became the pastor of the church of Philippi. Come on, somebody. Amen. You know how God's going to do it. You just got to get out of the way. Mm, amen. So I got to stay out of the way. You see. Because see, I can go on trying to, let's try this. Start getting like Sarah. Let, let's, let's help out Abraham. Mm -mm. God don't need no help. God need one thing. You need to write this down. God needs one thing from you, and that's your submission. Wow. And without your submission, I got to tell you tonight, he can't use you. Mm. Wow. God can't use you without submission. Wow. Amen. Submission, you can't, let me tell you how important submission is. You cannot even successfully resist the devil without submission. Wow. James 4 and 7. Come on. Oh, hallelujah tonight. Shout glory to God. Oh, we praise you, God. Amen. So God knows what we need. You know, and like I said Sunday about the eagle, the, 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 the mama eagle and the baby eagle. <laughs> Puts those sticks up at the bottom of the nest to provoke the baby eagle to get out of the nest. And sometimes God has to allow you to go into some situations that provokes you to rise up out of your comfort zone. Wow. Amen. And so be so determined going in this new year. No, no. no don't, 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 don't get no resolution. New car. <laughs> new, new house. <laughs> I'm going to get a new wardrobe going into the new year. All this difference. No, no. Let your focus be. I'm going to possess more of God. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight, somebody. Oh, my God. Glory to God. I'm going to get, I don't care what, I, listen, I don't care what anybody else is doing. <laughs> All I know that if I have him, I have everything. Wow. Moses said, Lord, who do I tell? Send me. He says, you tell them, I am that I am. Wow. What does that mean? It means everything is with you. And everything is for you. And everything is fighting with you. Wow. And that's what God is. Everything. Jehovah. Self-existent ones. We need to know him. We need to know him. Paul said that I may know him. 
the fellowship of his sufferings, the power of his resurrected life. We need to know him. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. James 4 and 7, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit. Submit. That's when you grow. That's when you start growing. But without submission, you just, you, you, 40 years, 40 years, no change. 40 years, no turnaround. 40 years, nothing. Wow. Amen. Amen. See, let me tell you, yes, well, see, <laughs> we were about to buy this house, right? And so we were like, okay. This is the house. We're going to get this house. And watch what God did. Now, this house we were going to get, we had to build a garage. We had to do all kind of other stuff and make it like what we want. And so all of a sudden, Pastor Keith said, look, did you see this? And I'm like, no, I don't see this. It's not even on the market. And so we looked at it, emailed the guy. He emailed back and says, this house is already under contract. Somebody got it. It's contingent. So something rose up in me and said, what is the contingency? He came back and said, you know what? <laughs> I think we got an opportunity on this. <laughs> wow. Somebody said, hallelujah. Long story short. We watch God in one week take a house out of the hands of somebody else, tear up their contract, and give it to us. Wow. Oh, somebody ought to praise him right now. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Supernatural. The house wasn't on the market. And the two-car garage, we don't need to build no garage. It's already there. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on. See, I want to help you tonight and get you to understand that God knows your heart. He knows your desires. If you please him, he'll please you. Wow. Oh, my God. Amen. Just give him your heart. Serve him with all of your heart. It might look like sometimes ain't nothing happening. It might look like sometimes things are not turning around. It might look like sometimes things are not working out. Those are the times that you have to understand that God is with you the most. It's called preparation. Amen. Because when God get re gets ready to take you to your promise process, mm. you got to take it to the process. Why? Because see, if he doesn't develop you through the process, you're going to do like King Az Azariah. <laughs> when he got strong and a whole lot of wealth and a whole lot of increase, the Bible says he lifted up his heart in pride against God. Wow. Got caught up on himself, you see. Amen? So God wants your heart. God wants your heart. Amen. Praise him tonight. Hallelujah. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Let's get revelation of this. Submit under the authority of God's word and with his word you use to resist the devil and he will flee from you. I like, what the, well, I like the, the, the revelation of the, what, what is it? He will what? Flee from you. He will run in terror. Wow. He's afraid of you. Wow. Because Christ, the hope of glory, is a body in your life. Whew. Amen. Oh, praise him tonight, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. All right. And so there, there's got to be a commitment to this there's got to be a faithfulness to him there's got to be a loyalty to him wow how many remember uh king saul's armor bear amen what happened he killed himself praise god 
Okay, so he was loyal to Saul. Saul, you know the story about King Saul. He messed up, turned, you know, disobeyed God. He was rejected as king. He was in the battle. He got hit with, a, with an arrow, spear, and uh, I mean, he was dying, but he, he, his life was still whole in him. And so he told his armor bearer to, to take his sword and kill him, kill him with his sword. And his armor bearer wouldn't do it. He said, no, I'm not going to do it. And so the Bible specifically said that Saul took his own sword and fell on it and killed himself. And his armor bearer saw that he fell on his sword. He fell on his sword and killed himself with his master. Wow. It was a level of loyalty. In a bad way, but there's a level of loyalty, commitment to his leader, you see. Somebody say hallelujah. You see. And so that's what God is looking for. What you're looking for is already looking for you. What you're expecting is already expecting you. Wow. Amen. But as long as you're looking for and looking for these things and looking for all this other stuff, it's going to run away from you. Wow. Amen. Because God has it and he's ready to bless you and to increase you more and more. Somebody say hallelujah tonight. Amen. Can we give God praise tonight? Amen. 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 And so stay in the spirit. Live your life in the spirit. How do I live in the spirit? Come on. Two things. The word of God and prayer. Uh, yes, well, go to uh, First Kings. Oh, hallelujah. First Kings 19. So you can't, you can't do it. Shout, I can't do it. I'm going to complain. I'm going to stress. I'm going to be frustrated. So those days are over. Well, pastor, you know, we're in this world and you're going to face things and there's going to be some times where you're just going to have to worry. Who said that? <laughs> wow. You see, who said that? Wow. <laughs> well, you know, uh, they're going to be. Sometimes you're just going to say the wrong things. Who said you have to? Wow. Mm. Amen. You're working on your heart. You're developing, you're growing in the word of God. And so out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. And so we, we're confessing. We're, we're professing the word. That word profess. Why the King James uses the word profession of faith. Why? Because the word profession it's tied to occupation. It is your life's job, not just a job, it's your career. Wow. To know this word, to renew your mind in this word. This is your profession. This is what you do. That's why Paul told Timothy, 2 Timothy 2 and 15. He said, study to show yourself approve in the sight of God a workman. A who? Come on, a who? What was he working? Come on, what was he working? The word. You see. He said a workman needeth not to be ashamed. Mm. In any situation, no situ needeth not to be ashamed in any situation. Not to be ashamed. What was he telling him? He was telling, Paul was telling Timothy this. You're going to know the word. And you're going to study the word. He said the word of God is going to be in you. And you're going to be able to rightly divide it. And not any time, Timothy, will you be at a place. Oh, you need to write this down tonight. Not any time will you be at a place where you do not know what to do. Or what to say. Wow. Oh, my God. You will know how to apply the word. Now, if Jesus set the example for us, tempted of the devil, he didn't speak anything else but what? The word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It is written. Each time. 
third time. It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Only him shalt thou serve. Each time, the word, the word, the word. And so the enemy wants to constantly make the people of God think that, you know, you don't need the word like that. That's just for the, the, the pastor <laughs> to know the word like that. No, that's for the body of Christ. Wow. Amen. And so that's why the enemy uh, raised up religion, which is counterfeit of life in the spirit. And so churches become about everything else except the word. And so we've mastered all these things. We mastered music. We mastered the articulation of being able to preach, uh, but can't live right. Wow. Can't walk right. Don't know how to love right. Come on, somebody. Amen. Walking in hatred and, and just, I mean, bad attitudes, just, 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 just walking dysfunctional. Wow. Wow. I hear you, Lord. Write this down. As God breathed into the nostrils of Adam, he must breathe in you. Wow. You need him to breathe in you. And that's what he's doing when you meditate on the word of God. He's breathing in you, life in you. Look at this. Uh, we don't have time to read all of this, but Elijah was running for his life from Jezebel. And so he came to a place, uh, sat up under a juniper tree. And when he sat up under the juniper tree, he laid down and said, Lord, I just want to die. He was going through, depressed, frustrated, because running for his life from Jezebel. And so... <laughs> He looked, an angel came, touched him. Look at uh, 1 Kings 19, verse 5. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. He said to do what? Arise and eat. See, so what's, what's he, what's he we, we learned from this. He was going through dealing with some challenges. It's not time to quit. No, no, don't, don't quit. Don't give up. Start eating. Start meditating on the word. Start reminding yourself of what God said. Wow. Amen. Start praying. Two things. Those two levels of authority that God gives is what? Word of God and prayer. Two levels of power. One is exousia, which is the word of God. The other one is dunamis. Which is the might of God comes by the power of the spirit. You need both of them. Amen. And so that has got to be your focus. That's got to be your priority. And I'm going to walk in. Jesus said when you pray, enter into your closet. The Father who sees you praying in secret, he's going to reward you in the open. What is the reward in the open? Power. The anointing flowing on you. Amen. Oh, shout hallelujah tonight. <laughs> And he looked, verse 6, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. He did what? Ate and drank. Meditating on the word is eating. Prayer is drinking. Wow. Shout hallelujah. Prayer satisfies your thirst in your life. Out of your belly, what did, what, did, what did Jesus say? Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The Holy Spirit is like what? Rain. Wow. Amen. You need that living water. He said again, verse 7, And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because, come on, read. He said what? Because what? Come on, read it again. He said, because what? It's too great for you. <laughs> it's, it's too great. Wow. It's too great for you. Wow. That's why it's no more I that live but Christ that lives in me. Amen? Verse 8. 
And he what? Arose and did what? Eat and drink. And what happened? He went into what? He went into strength. Of that meat. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> he went in the strength of that meat. Forty days and forty nights. <laughs> wow. That's why you study the word. His strength. Luke 18 and 1. Oh, hallelujah. So I'm getting this. Amen. Luke 18 and 1. What did he say? And he spake a parable unto them to this end that what? Men ought to do what? Always to pray and what? And not to faint. So if I'm praying, I'm not going to faint. Write that word faint down. The word faint means to lose heart, turn coward and give up wow and so what's happening people are giving up people are what turning coward amen walking away from God why no established prayer life wow wow amen amen the Bible says pray without ceasing the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much what did Jesus do? All through his ministry sets the example. Wow. We just focus on the cross. We just focus on that he died for our sins and that he was buried. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. What we don't focus on is all the time that he walked the earth, he mastered the flesh. Wow. Wow. He overcame carnality. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. He often wandered away from the disciples and went to pray. And often the Bible says he prayed all night. One night he prayed all night. He came uh, in the middle of the night walking on the water. Wow. To his disciples. Wow. Live in the supernatural. So God's called me to live in the supernatural, in the name of Jesus. You have the kingdom life. You have the kingdom life. And so Jesus said, make that priority. And so his first message, his number one first message we shared the other service signifies what? Utmost importance. His first message, Matthew 4 and 17, was what? Repent for the what? kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's here, attainable for you to experience it. Now, everything that you need is here. What did Jesus tell Peter? He said, I have given to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Wow. That's why you need to study the word of God so you can know the keys of the kingdom. Wow. The key to divine health. The key to prosperity. The key total peace and joy, the key to walking in the love of God, the key wow, to living and conquering carnality, the key, you see, you have the keys of the kingdom. He didn't say to, he said of, which means you have the keys to every single door in his kingdom. Wow. But the enemy doesn't want you to know the principles. The keys are principles of the kingdom. He doesn't want you to know. Well, you don't have time. You don't have time to study. <laughs> you don't have time to really meditate on the word. So I got to break all cycles, all patterns of living that's been keeping me out of God's word. Wow. Amen. You make that sacrifice for him. Oh, you setting yourself up. Wow. You setting yourself up for greatness. Amen. 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 And we're out of time. Come on, somebody say hallelujah.
Come on, let's give him praise tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, so put him first. Put him first. Make him priority. In Jesus' name. The Bible says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Draw nigh to him while he is near. Well, Pastor, I just got so much situations and things that's happened. Listen, there is nothing. Yes, Lord. I told you to go to John 8 earlier. I got to go there. You just gave me that back. John 8. We're supposed to read that. Hallelujah. And 31. I got so many things God is able to do. Exceeding. Abundantly. Above all. That we ask or think. Wow. He's able to do. We serve a big God. But you got to see him. You got to know him. How great he is. Yes Lord. Your study. Of the word. Has to outgrow. Your circumstance. Mm. The size. Of your word level. Has to outgrow your situation. Wow. Amen. How about you thirsty and you just got an inch of water in the glass? <laughs> and that's it for the whole day. That's all you get. Is that going to be enough for you? Hello, somebody. Is the inch of water going to be just enough for you for all day long? <laughs> You're going to be mad. <laughs> Amen. No, it's not enough. So think about the word of God. Your level of meditating on the word. Look at this. Must increase. He says, John 8. And we are in. Yes, Lord. We're in the new year. This is the year. Of increase, the year of God taking you into your promise, into your increase. You will see, mark my word tonight, you will see the supernatural power of God manifested in your life like never before. Spontaneous things occurring and happening for you. Wow. Amen. Amen. Yes, praise Him. Praise Him. Whew. You will see it. It has already started. Amen. Amen. Listen, what's on the leader flows down. I hear something here. Uh, let's read this. We're going to go to Psalm 133. We're closing. Child, we're closing. <laughs> Amen. Verse 31, John 8, 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth and this truth shall make you free. It's liberating you. It's liberating your, your inner man. Wow. You, you start walking around like, man, whew, I'm not even worried about that no more. It doesn't even bother me anymore. It doesn't even, wow, I'm not even stressed out over that anymore. Because the word of God has driven it out. Wow. Wow. Life is taking over. Glory to God. Amen. Come on, we're going to close with this. Psalm 133. Amen. What's on the leader, what's on the pastor flows down on you. Wow. Show me where that's at, Pat. Go to Psalm 133. <laughs> wow. That's why it's important to stay in divine alignment. Why? Because I'm connected to the blessing. And watch what the Bible says here. He says, behold, verse one, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to what? Dwell together where? In unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there, come on, read. For what? For there, the what? The who? The Lord did what? Commanded the blessing. Wow. 
even life forevermore. Wow. Amen. The brother uh, that, that joined Sunday, Brother Earl, <laughs> called me the next day. Now, what, what happened? He came up, got his life. Number one, first thing he did was what? He came up, repented, got his life in, in, in divine order with God. Then he, he needed a covering. Then we opened the doors to the church and he, he came right back up and what? Connected with the ministry. He got under the umbrella, the covering of God, the divine order. The next day, he called him pastor. <laughs> he, said, he said the city opened their doors for him, gave him a full-time spot. He was only temporary. Wow, come on, somebody. Took his pay to the next level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Father, we thank you tonight. We praise you for your strength, for your grace, for your mercy, for your love and kindness. Thank you for your word. God, that we're so determined to, to know you more and more, God, and to arise and be strong in you, fortified and established in you. And God, that we walk in that divine alignment with your will. We praise you tonight. And we glorify your name, God. We thank you that we will see you. We will see your hand working, moving, manifesting greatness. And we thank you, God. We will rise and increase in wisdom, and revelation, and truth. We will rise in the authority and the power of Christ more and more. And we thank you, Father. We glorify your name in Jesus' name. And I declare right now that your people are speak over their lives, that they conquer and they walk as overcomers. They walk blessed of the Lord. No circumstance, no situation will be a distraction to them. But they will stand strong in you, Father. And God, that you open doors mightily for them. And we praise you and thank you in advance now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Can we give him praise tonight? Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Glory to God.